So now we have a basic idea of what we want our model to look like, right? Um, and what we want to get out of it. So now we need to think about how are you actually going to build that model, right? And right here I have laid out seven design choices you need to make when constructing an agent-based model, right? Uh, and, you know, th these kind of go take you through step-by-step step thinking about what that model is going to look like. So the first one is, what part of your phenomenon would you like to build a model of? Uh, this is kind of asking the scope slash question question, right? Um, and then what are the principal types of agents involved? What properties do these agents have? What actions or behaviors can these agents take? How do these agents interact with each other or with the environment? And what kind of environment do these agents operate? Are there, as we call them, environmental agents? Agents that actually take action but may not be moving or may place an environment around the other agents. Um, and if you had to define the phenomena as discrete time steps, what events will occur in each time step in what order? And what do you have to hope to observe in this model? And if you think about it, this is similar to the questionnaire I had you fill out early on, where we actually spent some time uh, thinking through these for a model you're interested in building. Right, so let's talk about each of these in detail. So scope and question. Well, before any design, any concrete design decisions are made, you should make sure that it makes sense to model your question using agent-based modeling. Uh, and of course, we went over that in unit one as to what the different advantages are of using agent-based modeling. And given that, you might want to refine the original research question that you had in light of these advantages. So if we think back to the information diffusion question and we think about what aspects of it really allow agent-based modeling to shine, well, one of them is you know, heterogeneity of individuals, right? That was something we talked about. And individuals in the network diffusion question or in the infusion, diffusion question have heterogeneous positions within the overall social network. And that could be something that we we want to think about. Right? Um, agents might also have local but complex interactions, right? If you think to the BAS model, right, the, the decision to adopt or not adopt once we move to a network context is not based upon some sort of aggregate level statistics, but it's based upon my local level of who's adopted, which is a local interaction that's potentially complex. And we can think of other adoption rules that might be even more complex than that one, as we'll discuss later. Um, it's also the case that the environment is very rich, right? And as a result, some agents may have more information sources than others. They may be hubs, they may uh, might be potentially affected by their network structure. So given all that, let's rephrase our original research question to be something along the lines of, how does novel information diffuse through a population embedded in a social network based on both broadcast and local information drivers? So the second thing you want to consider is what are the agents of your model? And tied up with this is the granularity slash level of the agent. So this is dealing with at what scale are we going to model our agents, right? Um, are we going to do it at a cellular level, at an organization level, or as was commonly done on the individual human level, right? And this is partially related to the temporal scale question, right? Are we interested in how much information a person adopts tomorrow, or are we interested in how much information an organization adopts over the course of its entire, uh, over a year, for instance. Right? You might also at this point start to think about proto-agents, so certain things you might initially think, well that can make, that needs to be an agent in my model, right? So in the case of the diffusion question, maybe broadcast media, like the TV um, and even the internet for that matter need to be represented as agents, but maybe they don't because at least initially we're not going to really give them their own properties. They're not going to respond to what the consumers are watching, at least in our model, because we're not interested in the consumption model, we're interested in the diffusion model, right? So these might be what we call proto-agents, right? Uh, so in the diffusion example, I can think of at least three types of agents that we have. We have human individuals, right? Uh, we have network connections, which are agents themselves, right? The social connection between two individuals could be an agent uh, because it might have its own properties like weight and confidence and things like that. Uh, and the media, the broadcast media we talked. Interestingly enough, human individuals might have different types as well, right? So we might have some agents who are really experts in their field, right? And have more ability to influence others uh, than the non-experts. Uh, and so as a result of that, we might think about multiple types. In, in the traditional diffusion literature, 
There's often a discussion about what they're called influential agents versus imitator agents. And so maybe we can think about them from that context.